Hey guys, it's Ryan G. Wright with DoHardMoney.com coming to you with the Just Ask Ryan question of the day. You see, every single day I answer a question about real estate, about finance, about lending, about hard money, about investing, about rental properties. So if you've got a question of the day you'd like me to answer, type it in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer that for you. Today's question of the day is, what is the right attitude towards money? What we're gonna talk about here is avoiding scarcity, avoiding overabundance, and some of those different types of things that are pretty prevalent. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what's this attitude, what's the right attitude I should have towards money. So, um, I think what's interesting when we talk about money is some people look at money as it doesn't exist, like it's just kinda of like not even there, like put it on the credit card, don't worry about it, we'll figure it out later. Um, some people think of money as like, it's so scarce, there's so little of it, I need to, um, I need to protect everything. Um, some people look at money as a vehicle. Um, I look at money as a tool to, in order to do other things. So let me explain. Um, usually people that don't have money accuse or blame people that do have money as to doing things to get money that may not be on the up and up or you know they got lucky or they took advantage of people because he's a salesperson and that's where he got his money from so i find that a lot of people don't have money um, justify why other people have money based upon them doing something immoral in order to get it now this isn't always the case but i see this quite a bit like oh you know, he either got lucky, oh, he just got money from his parents, or, you know, he um, did things he shouldn't have to earn it. He sold people stuff they did, really didn't want, and that's how he got all his money. And in a way to kind of justify or make themselves feel better about not having a bunch of money. Um, in the same regards, I see people that, that have conflicts with money where they make excuses as to why they don't. You know, if I would have been able to go to a great school, if I would have been raised differently, if I would have done things like this, then I would have that money. So in, in essence, it's not my fault that I don't have money is kind of that attitude. Um, I also see people that have money um, that have been given that, that didn't work for it. Um, that have money coming from parents or hand-me-downs, that type of stuff, and don't fully appreciate money. One of the things that I see quite frequently is you have a generation that works hard, scrimps, saves, understands the value of money, and then they want their kids to have a better life, and so they provide all these things for their kids, but then their kids grow up with this entitlement mentality, um, and they don't know how to use money or what money is or how it works, and they spend all the money or blow all the money, um, and then their kids grow up with not as much, and so then they say, hey, I'm gonna make a difference, and then they go back and work, and this kind of this, this cycle that I see quite frequently, and we see it historically as well. I think one of the things, big mistakes, as people make some money, um, is they spend it too fast. So when you make some money, let's say that you went out there and you may altered some of these uh, self-limiting beliefs and said, you know what, I've got as much opportunity as anybody else out there. I've got as much hours in the day as anybody else out there. I may have to work harder, I may have to work smarter, but I can find, figure a way to make this out. Um, relationships are really important. Masterminds and knowing how to do things and getting information is really important, but you can do it. Um, but let's just say you, you overcame some of those things. Um, if you haven't already and you go out there and you make a deal happen, you find a property, you flip it. What I find a lot of people do is they go and blow that money rather than investing that money. And that's where the kind of the way I see money, I see money as a tool. Um, I look at money as little warriors that go out there and they go and try and get other little warriors and they recruit them and they bring them back and make more. See, the idea is, is if you just went and flipped a property, you made $30,000 or $36,000, kind of like your average customer does, um, and then you go to the Bahamas or go blow the money or do stupid stuff with it, you kind of haven't gotten any better. You might have had a great vacation, but what if you took that same amount of money and you made an investment? Let's say you did a loan or you took a, you, you did a joint venture and then you took that $36,000 and turned it into $46,000. Then you took that $46,000 and turned it into $56,000. You see, reinvesting that, and then at some point you could take that 
$100,000 and buy a rental property. And that rental property, you still have the rental property. You don't owe any money on that rental property, depending upon the purchase price, but you're still getting maybe $800 a month in cash flow. So now you're getting cash flow. You can spend that cash flow to go on the vacation. So it comes with this whole concept of delayed gratification of saying, you know what, I really would like to go on that great vacation, but if I invest that money, they will pay me for vacations for a long time to come. Now, I've also seen some people that have a lot of money that are too scrimpy and never spend any of that. And I don't think that's the, the right thing to do either of saying, I'm never going to do anything um, with this money. I'm only going to scrimp and save it. Um, there comes a point where it's like, hey, we could loosen up just a little bit and, and help out in other ways. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go spend a bunch of money. Um, you could donate money. You could put it towards great causes. There's a lot of things that you need to do here. Um, so I think this idea with money is, don't get too high and don't get too low, meaning don't get too scarcity and don't get too abundance minding. Um, make sure that you're not justifying your situation, whether you've got some money or you don't have money as to justifying why you're in the situation you are um, being at, or in the other regards, blaming other people that they did things maybe they shouldn't have in order to get there. That type of a mindset does not help you get closer to what you want. It's the whole concept of bringing people down rather than helping to raise them up. Somehow it's supposed to make you feel better if you cut somebody down, but it just doesn't. It just makes the situation better. What has to happen is you take accountability for the decisions you've made, put a plan together about new decisions that you could be making. Um, one of the best things I think you can do is just say, hey, here's my current situation. Here's where I want to be. Come up with a stepping stone in between here and there and then put work together to make that happen. Um, and start looking at money as this vehicle, what it can do in providing the lifestyle, what it can do in providing cash flow, what it can do in providing the means for taking care of your family. One of the things I did early on in my career is in my shower, I put a cash flow chart. I really was less concerned about how much money I had. I was more concerned about how much money I was making without having to work, also known as cash flow. See, I define wealth not as much how much money you have, but as how many months you can go without having to go and do labor, without having to have a job. So can you survive? Two months, one month, half a month, a fourth of a month, 12 months? Can you, involve, can, you, can you survive 20 years without having to get a job, without having to do something to bring that money in? However long you can do, that's the definition of wealth, is how long you can last without having to earn earned income. And I'm talking about managing rental properties, those things, those are really a, more of a, ca a passive investment. We're talking about how long it's gonna take you to actually, before you have to go out there and do earned income as well. I think this is where it all starts. You see, a lot of people come to us, they want to get flipping properties, but their mindset is wrong. Um, they're making excuses as to why other people have things they don't. They're making excuses as to why they're in the situation that they are. One of the things I found with working with a lot of successful people is excuses don't pay the bills and excuses don't get you closer to where you want to go. They're actually anchors that are holding you down. And once you release that anchor and start saying, it's all up to me, if it is to be, it is up to me, that's when change really starts happening. And then you start seeing the world in new aspects. And that's where that mind shift actually starts to happen. But without a mind shift, without making a commitment, without doing things daily to get you where you want to go, without putting a plan together. And the plan is probably the most important.